Hello everyone, this is Cindy Seidelman once again. It is review time. I know we've done a lot of them uh, for the month, but hey, it's February, we're starting off hot, and we're starting off February's reviews with a show that shouldn't have been released as early as it was. If you know what the hell happened with Australian Gladiators, this show would have debuted February 5th. Instead, it debuted January 29th. And that, my friends, is the Australian revival of Deal or No Deal. Deal or No Deal was essentially invented in the Netherlands. It then had its first big exposure outside of the Netherlands in Australia, hosted by Andrew O'Keefe, who I think is probably still getting his ass kicked in prison. I'm not quite so sure. But either way, it was a massive success for Seven. And now, after about a decade hiatus, decade off the air, it has come back to Channel 10. Now, 10 obviously doesn't have the budget of 7 or 9, so there have been some changes made. Um, what has improved from the original run, I think the set, is, the set looks beautiful. I love the new set. Uh, it's an um, upgrade of the original set, the original Golden Bank Vault set, and they added some neon... Uh, they spruced everything up. Not, not neon, but LED, which looks like neon. And spruced everything up, and it looks beautiful. Um, the cases that the show has are just spruced up versions of the Australian cases. You know how... And they have the gold cases. Um, it seems like every country has kind of like their own take on the cases, or in the UK, boxes. But I do like the Australian cases. Now we get to the major changes. Um, because Andrew O'Keefe is a complete idiot, we now have uh, Grant Denyer as host. I don't know what it is with 10, but it seems like every show that they have that doesn't have an established host attached to it, whether with the upcoming Jeopardy and Wheel revivals that are coming out 10 with Stephen Fry and Graham Norton. It's usually Grant Denyer who comes in as host. Uh, after seeing a couple episodes with him being host, he's he's fine. And, a four, and he does root for the contestants and everything, but if I'm watching 10 and I see him host almost every new show there is like he was the host of there was a, the family feud revival they had on 10 which ran for a while and i think he was all right there uh then they had celebrity name game which he hosted then i think they did game i think grant Denyer also hosted game of games for 10 like there's so many shows like, he's getting into overexposure level. Like, he's getting into Stephen Mulhern levels of overexposure if we're comparing uh, this deal or no deal to their deal or no deal. I'm not saying that uh, Grant Denier is bad. Um, and he's not. I just think he's overexposed. And I think you could have had another host uh, come in I just don't know. I don't know Australian pop culture at all. Um, who can also do as well of a job, or maybe even a better job than uh, Grant, that Grant Denier is currently doing? Then we get to the actual gameplay, and here's where the big changes are. Instead of 26 cases, it's now 22, kind of like the UK version, and much like the UK version. Uh, the grand prize, instead of... See, the original daytime version was $200,000. $200, is now $100,000. 
that again is also because of going from 7 to 10. 10 does not have the massive budgets that are allowed with 7 or even 9. And then you have the... They still have the guesses. They still have the guesses. Or if you guess correctly, if you're in the if you're in the gallery, your case is picked. You say, "I think it's X amount of money, anywhere from the lowest, which is fifty cents." Or back in when it was uh, <laughs> uh, back in the original, I think they called it the Banoodles, the mon the monkey, the monkey was in the fifty cent case, and it was named Banoodles. But here we are. We have fifty cents all the way to a hundred thousand dollars. That's a pretty solid power five, thirty, forty, fifty, seventy-five, and the big one of a hundred thousand dollars. Thirty thousand, forty thousand, fifty thousand, seventy-five thousand, a hundred thousand. But you get that. And if you've watched any daytime Australian deal or no deal, it's essentially the same game, except with twenty-two cases instead of twenty-six. So. It still goes six, five, I think, if I remember correctly, it goes six, five, four, two, it goes, I might be getting this wrong, but six, five, four, two, one, all the way till it gets down to two. And the way that the bank, they've kind of tipped a couple of things when it comes to offers, when it comes to Australian deal, or no deal in the first couple of episodes. Um, first of all, even if you play a really good first round, you keep the power five, you're not getting a high offer whatsoever. It's still going to be low, like two to three thousand. And then you get offers where, like, he want you get he wants you gone and he wants you gone now offers. Like on the second episode, um, and if you haven't watched this episode, it's on ten play or play 10, do watch this episode. It is astounding, because the final three cases were 30,000, 75,000, and 100,000. The contestant had three of the power five left, and the offer was 62,000. That was a banker wants you gone now territory. If this was the UK version, the bank offer would have been like 45,000 pounds. If it had that same setup. But the banker in Australia is like, we want you gone. I'm willing to pay whatever it takes to get you gone. And when it comes to my final thoughts on this revival of Deal or No Deal, it's essentially what you want out of a revival of Australian deal or no deal. It's not trying to incorporate anything that it doesn't need to incorporate. It has all the same things from the past. It hasn't incorporated any double or nothing or mega guess yet, but there's still time. They probably might do that if this revival does well. We don't know the rate. I don't know the ratings for uh, Australian deal or no deal. I also want to say that as a show on its whole, rather than some of its parts, it is worth watching. I do hope that um, with 10 going all in on, well, essentially when it comes to game shows nowadays, uh, going in on revivals, that it works for them. And if it does work, um, you could have Deal or No Deal be an anchor show. It all depends on what's going to happen with um, Jeopardy Australia, which I do believe is, I think both Jeopardy and Wheel Australia, which has both been taped, I would love, I can't wait for them to debut because I would love to know what the differences are going to be. I don't know if it's just going to be like dollar amount changes. It might just be dollar amount changes for um, Jeopardy Australia and Wheel Australia um, just because of the budget constraints that 10 has. 
But anyway, if I were to throw a letter grade to Deal or No Deal Australia's reboot, I would throw it a B. I am admitted not a huge Deal or No Deal fan, um, but if the Austra- if this revival were on, it's a good way to spend 20 minutes, which means it is like exactly the daytime version. It's a 30-minute show. Thank goodness. Anyway, and with that, that's going to wrap it up for this edition of Game Show Gumbo. I'd like to thank everybody watching. Uh, For Australian fans out there, for those who have seen the new show, what are your thoughts on the revival of Deal or No Deal Australia? Leave your thoughts in the comment below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We've got a bunch of reviews coming up for various shows that are debuting. Uh, Also, check out the vlog. Also, check out the uh, VODs on this channel from my C3. C365 challenge that I'm doing on Twitch and on weekends the big videos come out which means those are uh, 26 weeks or less home games games of Can- games of Canada tier maker videos best worst and blandest and maybe the odd game show garbage video too we don't I don't know yet that does take time to create though with that being said, also subscribe to the Patreon if you haven't already at uh, patreon.com slash gameshowgumbo. Link is in the description. Anyway, thank you everybody. See you next time.